Today's lesson is called Pandemic Could Cause Famines of Biblical Proportions. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff. My name is Roger, and again today in the month of August, we're going to continue talking about the pandemic and diseases and other nasty things that might happen to you if you're not careful. Luckily, we here in Taiwan have been very careful, so we have been able to keep that pandemic at arm's length. But、uh, we still need to talk about the pandemic in terms of the world in global terms. So yeah, these、uh, famines and other problems could. Be coming back to haunt us for a long time. The title of today's lesson is "Pandemic Could Cause Famines of Biblical Proportions." So I think they're referring specifically to the COVID-19 pandemic, and that might cause some nasty famines that are really large in scale. Really large in scale. They're of biblical proportions because hey, nothing small happens in the Bible. Okay. Amazing, impossible, crazy, miraculous things happen in the Bible. When I think of the Bible, I think of Moses and Egypt and the locusts and all sorts of stuff like that. I think of huge things that happen, and that's why when someone says, "Oh, this is going to be of biblical proportions," what you're saying is that, "Wow, this is not going to be big. It's not going to be huge. It's going to be gigantic." Okay, it's going to be of biblical proportions. Things are going to happen that maybe you won't be able to believe. Anyways, folks, let's go ahead and take a short break. But when we come back, we'll start reading from our article called "Pandemic Could Cause Famines of Biblical Proportions." Pandemic could cause famines of biblical proportions. The COVID-19 pandemic could push the number of people at risk of starvation up to 265 million. The World Food Program (WFP) warned in April. Even before the pandemic, the WFP had reported that 135 million people in 55 countries were facing hunger due to war, global warming, and economic problems. The pandemic has put an additional 130 million in danger. 大家好，标题中我们看到单字 pandemic， 这个字是名词，指疾病大流行，流行病。例如 ，the disease quickly became a pandemic affecting the whole world。这个疾病迅速成为大流行，影响全世界。或是 ，AIDS is a deadly pandemic which infects people all over the world。艾滋病是蔓延全球的致命流行病。再来，我们看到名词 famine。意思是饥荒，例如 ，the people in the country were facing a famine because floods had killed most of the crops. 这个国家的人民正面临饥荒，因为洪水淹死了多数的农作物。接着，我们看到一个单字 ，starvation。这个字是名词，指饥饿、挨饿、饿死。举例来说 ，if food isn't brought to the country soon, people will begin to suffer from starvation. 若这个国家再不快一点有粮食进来，人民就会开始挨饿。或是 ，if the people don't get food soon, they will die of starvation. 若这些人再不赶快吃东西，他们会饿死。另外，补充这个字的动词 starve, s t a r v e, starve， 指饿死、挨饿。我们可以说 ，many people nearly starved to death after the natural disaster. 在那几天灾后，许多人几乎要饿死了。或是 ，The island has a lot of fruit and fish, so you won't starve there. 岛上有很多水果和鱼，所以你在那边不会挨饿。再来，我们看到动词 warn， 指警告、告诫。例如 ，The sign warned us not to drive fast on the wet road. 这个标志警告我们不要在湿的路上开快车。或是。I warned Bob that the children would not eat chicken. 我告诫 Bob 这些小孩不吃鸡肉。另外，补充一个相关片语 ：warn somebody of 加名词或动词 ing， 表示警告某人留意某人事物。举例来说 ，I was about to cross the street when my friend warned me of an approaching car. 当我正要过街时，我朋友警告我留意一辆接近中的车。接下来，我们看到单字 economic。这个字是形容词，指经济上的、有利可图的。我们可以说 
the trade agreement started a period of economic growth for the country. 这项贸易协定为该国开启一段经济成长期，或是 in the last election, economic issues were the most important to the voters. 经济议题在前次选举中最受选民所关注。Okay, now of course you all know what a pandemic is. That's when a disease is spreading through the population in all sorts of different countries all over the world. The pandemic, we all know about that. We're probably kind of sick of hearing about it, but there you have it. And in any case, here notice it says it could cause famines in the future. It's not saying it will cause those famines. It's saying it could cause those famines. It might cause them. We don't know for sure, but there is a possibility that these famines. Famines could occur or might occur because of the pandemic, and of course, a famine is when you just don't have enough food and lots of people starve. Yes, famines are not good things. Anyways, the COVID nineteen pandemic could push the number of people at risk of starvation up to two hundred and sixty five million. The World Food Program warned in April. So there you go. We've got a really big problem. On our hands, this is a famine of biblical proportions, so to speak. Yes, this pandemic, it was bad. Okay, everybody's probably tired of talking about it at this point, but it was a big deal. It was extremely bad, but there are going to be after effects of this that linger on and on and on, even after COVID nineteen. The disease itself has kind of faded into the background. There are still going to be after effects. One of which. Is a famine of biblical proportions that does not sound good at all. And yes, it says here the pandemic could push the number of people at risk of starvation up to 265 million. That's not a typo. That's a lot of people, and these people are at risk of starvation. By the way, if you starve. You're not simply hungry, okay? It goes well beyond that. If you are starving, you are dying because you're not getting enough food, okay? So to starve, that would be the verb starvation. That would be the noun. When you are at risk of dying because you're super hungry and you don't have enough food. Yep, at risk of means this、uh, terrible thing might happen to you. For example, I could say you're at risk of getting fired if you keep sending text messages to your friends during office hours. You run that risk. It's Very possible that this will happen to you. You might get fired. You're at risk of getting fired, and lots of people are at risk of starvation. It might happen to them. They might starve to death. And the number has gone up to 265 million. Do some mathematics there. That is many times more than the population of Taiwan. We're talking about a lot of people there dying, and all those people have brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. It's not going to be a happy situation. And that's what the world. Food program warned us in April.、Uh, that's what they warned us about. So here we've got the word "warn." That means somebody gives you some information about something terrible that might happen in the future. The government might warn us of an impending invasion from another country. For example, they'll warn us. They'll let us know ahead of time that something bad is going to happen. Yeah, the WFP is saying, "Heads up, everyone." Okay, something really bad might happen because of the COVID nineteen pandemic. Yeah, these people who are at risk of starvation, that number is going to skyrocket all the way to two hundred and sixty five million. Oh goodness! Now, even before the pandemic, the WFP, the World Food Program, had reported. That 135 million people in 55 countries were facing hunger due to war, global warming, and economic problems. But yes, that number, even though that's already really big, okay, has skyrocketed. It has almost doubled from 135 million people to 265 million people. All of these people are now going to be at risk. Of starvation, and these people are all over the world. They're in 55 countries, all over the world, and yes, they're facing hunger due to a number of things: the pandemic, war, global warming, economic problems. The list goes on and on. Now, here we do have the adjective economic. That means of or having to do with 
the economy. Now, when you're talking about the economy of a nation, you're talking about the business environment in that nation, okay? How are companies doing in that particular nation? Are the stocks going up? Are they going down? Are bonds going up, going down, so on and so forth? When you're talking about these things, you're talking about the economy of a country. Now, the pandemic has put an additional 130 million in danger. So we already had a lot of problems to begin with. Again, we got wars, global warming, economic problems, but the pandemic has made it even worse. It's put an additional 130 million people in danger. So here we've got the word additional, which means something more than what you already had. For example, hey, I'd like to go to that university, but I need some additional information. I don't have enough information about it, so I need some more information concerning how to apply or how many students are there, etc., etc. I need more or I need additional information. And we've also got the phrase to put someone or something in danger. That means to cause people or things to be in a dangerous situation. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break, but don't go away. We'll be back soon. While dealing with a COVID-19 pandemic, we are also on the brink of a hunger pandemic, David Beasley, head of the WFP, told the UN Security Council. Already 821 million people go to bed hungry every night, he added. The pandemic could increase that number to 1 billion. Most affected were countries in Africa and the Middle East, where the lives of people were already vulnerable because of conflict. About three dozen countries were facing possible famine. Okay, let's continue talking about this potential dire situation in the future that is being caused by the pandemic, or at least made worse by the pandemic. And here is a quote from somebody. It says, while dealing with a COVID-19 pandemic, we are also on the brink of a hunger pandemic. And this is what David Beasley said. He's the head of the WFP, and that's what he told the UN Security Council, which is a department of the United Nations. So he said, yes, when dealing with this problem, with this pandemic, we are also on the brink of a hunger pandemic. So here, on the brink of something just means on the edge of something. Something is about to happen. There you go. We're on the brink of a hunger pandemic. So after having the COVID-19 pandemic, fallout from that might cause a hunger pandemic. This does not sound good at all. I'm a little bit scared. Now it says, already 821 million people go to bed hungry every night, he added. This is another thing that David Beasley said. And it also says here that the pandemic could increase that number to one billion. So yes, 821 million people go to bed hungry every night. Yes, they don't have enough food. They didn't get to eat a nice dinner. They're going to bed hungry every night. And this hunger pandemic might increase that number by about ooh, 200 million more. Yes, that number might rise to 1 billion. That's not a good thing. That sounds terrible to me. By the way, let's start with the numbers at the very beginning there. Let's count by tens. 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million. Okay, now we can keep going, but all you have to do is take 1 million and add three zeros to the end of that number, and you get a billion. Yes, when we're talking about a billion of something, that's going to be one followed by nine zeros. That's one billion of something. Indeed, one billion people are going to be suffering from hunger there. That's uh, not a pleasant thought. And most affected were countries in Africa and the Middle East, where the lives of people were already vulnerable because of conflict. So here we have the word vulnerable. That's kind of hard to say, but vulnerable means that you can be easily attacked. Like we could say newborn children are vulnerable to diseases. So they've got to be kept protected and away from germs and stuff like that. 
said, or maybe a weak country is vulnerable to attack. Like Costa Rica, for example, has no army, so they're vulnerable to military attack from Colombia or some place like that. I don't think that's going to happen, but that's just an example here. In any case, here these people were already vulnerable because of conflicts going on in their countries. And about three dozen countries were facing possible famine. So yes, indeed, we've got famine, we've got wars, we've got global warming, we've got all sorts of problems. Gosh, how terrible has this pandemic been? Will it ever end? Anyways, folks, with that, it is now time for us to take a short break. But when we come back, we'll be wrapping up our article. Beasley called on world leaders to come together to fight the disease and its effects. Failure to act, he said, could mean famines of biblical proportions. Adding that the economic effects of the pandemic could kill more people than the virus itself. Finally, the third part, we can see the word "call on" or "upon," signifying to call, to summon, to call. For example, the army was called upon to help clean up the damage from the flood. 军队被召集前往协助清理水灾造成的损害。Okay, remember we've got David Beasley here. He's the head of the WFP, and he's calling on world leaders to come together to fight the disease and its effects. So he called on those world leaders. Here, call on means something different. From calling somebody, I'll call you tonight and confirm tomorrow's meeting. But here, call on means he's making this request. He's telling other world leaders that they need to do something. He's saying that they should all come together and fight the disease. And its effects. And here, of course, we've got the word disease. That's just some kind of sickness that can spread all over the place. There you go, like COVID nineteen. That's a coronavirus. That's a disease. It can make you sick. Now, sometimes diseases don't necessarily only refer to oh infections by way of virus or bacteria. A disease can be other things as well. Anything that makes you feel unwell or which keeps you from functioning. Normally, you can call that a disease, a type of sickness. To be clear, anyways, failure to act, he said, could mean famines of biblical proportions. Adding that the economic effects of the pandemic could kill more people than the virus itself. How about that? So yes, David Beasley is calling on world leaders. Yeah, guys, get your act together. We need to act now, or else things might just get really bad. There might be famines of biblical proportions, and these famines might actually be worse than COVID nineteen itself was.、Uh, indeed. So yeah, again, as you said earlier, if you're saying something is biblical or of biblical proportions, it's going to be Big, like all the disasters and all the massacres and things like that that occurred in the Bible, and he was adding that the economic effects of the pandemic could kill more people than the virus itself. And we have mentioned the word virus many times, but、uh, I guess we could take this opportunity to explain once again the difference between a virus and bacteria. A virus, of course, is very small; it's not really living, and of course, it causes different sorts of problems. Than bacteria does. Bacteria is actually living, and you have to treat them with different kinds of medicine and techniques. Anyways, folks, with that, today's lesson is now in the books, and it's time for you guys to hear from the Chinese teacher. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第二部分写到，世界粮食计划署署长说 ，While dealing with a COVID-19 pandemic, we are also on the brink of a hunger pandemic. 处理新冠肺炎爆发的同时，我们也处于饥饿大流行的边缘。那这边来看三个重点。第一个是句子里面的 while 是当连接词，来表达在什么期间与什么同时。那注意，它连接的两个子句主词一样的时候，我们可以把 while 后方的主词省略，然后把主动动词改成现在分词。
那么句型就会变成主词加动词 while 动词 ing， 或者是 while 动词 ing， 逗号主词加动词。像我们课文的前半句 while dealing， 它就是由 while we are dealing 简化而来的。那就省略相同主词 we， 然后动词 are dealing， 它只要保留现在分词 dealing 就可以了。那我们来造一个例句 ：She listened to the radio while knitting. 她一边听广播一边织东西。好，第二个重点是片语动词 deal with， 它表示处理、应付或是解决。那么后面可以接人或是事物，像是 They had no idea how to deal with the problem. 他们不知道该如何处理那个问题。那顺便补充一下 ，deal with 的其他用法，像第一个，它可以表达与什么什么做生意、有生意的往来，像是 The factory deals directly with its customers. 那间工厂直接跟顾客有生意往来，没有透过中间商。好，那么第二个用法是表达关于涉及什么什么。那么后面就是接你要探讨的主题，像是 The book deals with the Vietnam War. 这本书呢是关于越战。好，再来看第三个重点，名词 brink。它是指边缘，像是悬崖、峭壁等等的边缘。那么 ，on the brink of 字面的意思就是在什么什么的边缘。它用来比喻说在什么的关头、濒临或是即将发生的意思。那么后面是要接名词或动名词，像是 on the brink of extinction 或是 on the brink of going extinct， 就可以表达濒临绝种。好，那我们也可以把 brink 换成 edge 或者是 verge。v e r g e verge 这个名词呢，它是指边缘、边界。那么 on the verge of something 字面意思是处在什么什么的边上，也可以用来描述说接近某一种状态，近乎、濒临、快要怎么样的意思。像是 they are on the verge of divorce， 他们处于快要离婚的状态，或者是说 the company is on the edge of bankruptcy， 那间公司濒临破产。好，以上今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Warn. Terry's mom warned him not to cross the busy street by himself. Economic. Economic concerns will have an influence on the way people vote in the next election. Additional, we need some additional information from you. Please fill out this form. Billion, the world's population has now reached nearly eight billion people. Disease, if you quit smoking, you will lower your chances of getting heart disease. Virus, the cause of Russell's illness was a virus that attacked his lungs. Discussion starter starts now. It's time now for our discussion starter, and here's the question: How can we make sure people all over the world have enough to eat? I think that we should focus on lowering food waste because, let's face it, wasting food makes no sense. Millions and millions of people are going to bed every night, and they're going to bed. Hungry, and here we are throwing away perfectly good food that makes no sense. Let's waste less food and make sure that there's enough food to go around for everyone. Well, kind of related to your point there, I'm、uh, going to be talking about food distribution actually instead of food waste, but they're kind of similar. So we should put more effort into food distribution. There are some countries that have more food than they really need, whereas other countries don't have enough. So if we could figure out how to spread that food around evenly throughout the world, that should take care of the problem of starvation. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next, next time. time.